This is Dave from ERC, and this is part five of the FT Legacy build series. And now it's beginning to look more like a plane, as you can see. So in this part, we're gonna be putting on the nacelles, putting in the motors, doing the wiring, and getting everything set up for the wing, including the linkages for the wing and the tail. So stay tuned, and we're gonna get right to it. In the last video in the series, I think it was part four, we went ahead and built this cable. And this is the splitter for the power to the ESCs. And use this liquid electrical tape to go ahead and insulate the connections right here on the pigtail. So now I just want to tape up over the top of this with some regular electrical tape just to make sure that we don't get a short. And this is just standard electrical tape. All right, just a little piece. I'm going to put this, at least insulate the red one, because that is the hot. That is where the plus voltage is at. So I'm just going to go around that. Nothing fancy, but I just want to make sure or doubly sure that nothing touches that. Okay, and I'll do this one too with some black electrical tape later. But I just want to make sure that one's protected. Okay, I just got done mounting the motors onto the power pods and I put the tape recommended, put packing tape all around it and then I went ahead and actually added some more thinner tape that went around to the inside because the packing tape really holds the motor mount on there the hot glue isn't enough then I carved out the hole in the center for the motor just cut the tape out of the way and cut the tape out of the way of the wire hole here and then mounted the motor like that so that the wires go through the bottom I've got it going through the bottom left and then on the right on this one so they're just opposite each other but I don't think that's a problem as long as they go through the bottom next I need to extend out the signal wires for the ESC's and I'll probably just use some extenders some extenders like that or after measuring with the extender I might actually solder wires to get that same length so I have the ESC leads in the alligator clip right here with the heat shrink behind it so it won't get hot while I'm soldering. And I'm just going to solder each lead together with the soldering iron. So they're all done. After I got the heat shrink done, I went ahead and just grouped them together with a little bit of clear packing tape. Just went around and That'll keep them from flexing and coming loose. So I'm going to extend out the wires for the aileron servos the same way I did the signal wires for the ESCs. So I'm going to do that now. So with the aileron servos, the length is starting right here and down to here, about 24 and a half inches for the aileron servo leads. For the ESC, it's about 18 inches. Okay, I fished in my ESC power splitter right here, and I've got my aileron servo wires also fished through this hole here. The servo arms are facing towards the inside, and the pivot of the arm is closest to the rear. Same thing on this side over here. You can see it. Servo arm facing towards the inside and the pivot is closest to where the horn will be. A little tip, I went ahead and used some packing tape on the trailing edge right here to protect this foam board and I put some on the front too, on the leading edge, just to protect the wing because this foam board can get dented up pretty easy. I also put some packing tape right around the tips of the wings too because that was vulnerable to getting dinged up. I'd already hit it against things several times so I decided to go ahead and tape it up with some of this. It's a narrow packing tape. Just put that on there for now. Might come up with something better later. 
like some colored vinyl or something. But for now, that's it. Now I need to fish my ESC signal wires through the wing and get them to come out the bottom. Now I think to fasten down the ESCs, I'm just going to use some Velcro rather than glue it on there because I might want to remove it later. But I don't want to make the Velcro too wide because we got to get the power pod around it and so forth. So I made a narrow piece here, but it's going to wrap around the cardboard like that for extra strength. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on. We'll just try it out. I'll let you know if it doesn't work. <laughs> All right, it's time to cut the ailerons loose and cut the bevel. Just go right along here. Oh, that was easy. All right, now we just need to run some hot melt down in this groove as usual. And then after that, while the hot melt's going, we can glue on our nacelles. So next we want to hot melt on the nacelles. Now I don't want to get any glue on the inside section because the power pod has to slide in there. It goes this way. But the power pod has to slide in there, so we don't want any hot melt on the inside. Only on the outside. So I think we can put some just along this edge, like right here, maybe on that, I don't know. So I just put some right in here. Just make sure I don't get any on the, where the nacelle's going. I can probably put some along here. There really isn't too much. Most of it has to be done on the outside, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Okay, so now we're going to do the other nacelle, basically the same thing. So next we have to hot melt on the nacelle bottoms. So I'm doing that now. I think what I'm going to do is wrap a piece of my tape around this just to reinforce it. All right, now I'm just getting these motors to go the right direction. I have my servo tester right here, and this one was going the wrong way, so I'm just trying to switch two of the wires and hope I get it right. I pulled one out. And now I gotta get this one onto that one. All right, looks like I got it now. It's going the right way. So that one's going clockwise and the other one's going counterclockwise. And I've got a couple of packs of uh, 10 by five props here that uh, are counter rotating. This goes one way and that goes the other. So that should take care of it. All right, getting ready to lock down the servo. I used one of these, which is a horn that I had. Just push it up through the bottom, that's what I did. I just put a little bit of uh, foam tack on the flange right here, pushed it up through the bottom, glued it in, then took some hot melt and hot melted each side. And it seems very strong. And I'm using one of these little keepers here and I know they can be a point of failure but just take a little bit of Loctite dab it on the threads shouldn't take a lot I have the aileron tape to the trailing edge right here to keep it 
in its neutral position. Then I'm just going to tighten down this screw. I also have the servo tester running here with this centered. So everything should be ready to lock it down. So I'm just going to lock that screw down as good as I can. Now I can take the tape off. Let's just see what it does here. So there it is. It goes about that far. So plenty of travel. Doing the other one the same way. I'm going to put on a little bit of Loctite and tighten the screw down. Okay, working on the tail section now. And I think I'm actually going to use a Z-Bend tool on this and make a rod that exactly fits right here. No keepers or anything. So I'm going to do that and I won't bore you with it. Just get that over with for the elevator and rudder. So I think I did a pretty good job. You can see the rudder is pretty straight there. And the elevator I got fairly good. I wasn't sure of the position exactly, but I put it where I thought it should be. May need a little trim later. But the Z-Bends all worked out using the tool. All right, giving it a quick test. Looks like it's working. So I've hot melted in some carbon fiber rods here for the rubber bands to go on instead of the barbecue skewers that we would normally use. I just have a few more things to do like labeling the wiring and configuring the flight controller and obviously I need props on it. Now if you're running a three cell you can use these 10 inch props like that or ones from flight test but if you're running a four cell you need to use nine inch props. Well that's it for now. We'll see you next time for the rest of the build series and hopefully we can get it all working.